Hello, hello, great twelves. Welcome back to the channel Science Therapy, hosted by the one and only science therapist O Abudewa Sos Okobela Wemet. And we are on episode three of today's challenge. We are looking at a question on Euclidean geometry, question eleven. So uh, let's see what we have got here. Rrr. Okay, so it says in the diagram below, PT and PQ are tangents to the circle ATQ at T and Q respectively. PK is parallel to QA. The quad TQ and PK intersect at R. And then they say prove that a PTKQ is a cyclic quadrilateral and all that for a whooping six marks. Right. So how are we supposed to prove that we know that the condition to prove a cyclic quad is either you're going to prove it using angles on the same segment, which is, we call it the bow tie, or you can prove using the fact that opposite angles of a cyclic quad are supplementary. So that means they add up to 180 degrees. Then number three, you can prove that an exterior angle of a cyclic quad will be equal to the opposite interior angle, right? So if you can prove either, either one of this, that means uh, it is a cyclic quad. So if we can find angles that are on the same segment here, for, uh, for example, let's say T2 and P2, if we can prove that they're equal, then we can prove that a uh, PTKQ is a cyclic quad. If we can prove, for example, that this whole angle here plus this angle here will give us 180 degrees, then in that way we would have proven again. And then also, if we can prove that an exterior angle here is equal to the opposite interior angle, then also that's another way of proving a cyclic quad. Now, let's use the information that we have, because most of the time with these questions, you'll find that uh, whatever that you need to prove will be based on the information that you are given. So you do not have to use anything else other than the statement that you are given. We are given PT and PQ are tangent, so we can see PT and PQ being tangents there. Then PK is parallel to QA. As we can see here, PK parallel to QA. So let's uh, highlight that. So these lines here are parallel. Now we know with parallel lines, we expect to have corresponding angles, co-interior angles, or alternate angles. So with parallel lines, math is fine. Right. Then look at this. Now we want to prove uh, whether this is a cyclic quad. If we can go ahead and just say K3, use the fact that we have a uh, parallel lines here, we can see that K3 here will be equal to angle A because this forms the shape F. So we have corresponding angles there. So we can start there and say K3 is equals to angle A. And then this is a corresponding angles. Then we need to give the pair of parallel lines PK parallel to QA. Right. Now, uh, let's look at another thing here. Let's use the fact that they told us that PQ is a tangent. Now, if PQ is a tangent, we expect that we can produce a tan chord, right? A tan chord angle. Look at this. This is Q1, an angle between the tangent PQ and the chord TQ. Now, we know tan chord says an angle between the tangent and the chord is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. So this angle here, this angle here, Q1, will be equal to angle A as well, right? So we can say Q1 is equals to angle A. Now we have two angles that are equal to A, but then look at this. If we can have a look at Q1 and then also K3, we can see that based on this quadrilateral P, T, K, Q, these are angles on the same segment. So we say uh, K3 is equals to, so let me use a green one, K3 is equals to Q1. And this is converse 
angles on the same segment. So I'm saying converse because we haven't proven yet that it is a cyclic quad. So I need to say converse angles on the same segment. Then I can, I can conclude, therefore, P, T, K, Q is a cyclic quad. So do not be uh, afraid for the, for, for the part that this is six marks. Remember how they mark its statement reason and then also here statement and reason right so remember the reason that we had for q1 being equals to a was tan chord so let me write that tan chord so statement reason and then also here statement and reason right so here it's just our conclusion ptkq is a cyclic quad right so you have your six marks like that so not messy, as clean as possible. Now let's move to 11.2. It says, prove that PK bisects TKQ. Now when it comes to these questions, where they say prove whether something bisect, a line bisects a particular angle, this is what you need to understand. There we have our PK there, line PK. They say prove that it bisects angle t k q so the angle uh, in question here is this one k2 plus k3 but then the word bisect means cut into equal halves right or you can say cut into two equal halves then in other words that means what you are actually proving here is the fact that K2 will be equals to K3. So it's very important that you understand uh, what is it that you are required to do, right? So they say prove that PK bisects TKQ. That means what you are actually proving is that K2 will be equals to K3 because the word bisects means that it will cut into equal half. So prove whether this line, it will cut uh, this angle here into two equal halves. So in, in simple terms. Then uh, let's go ahead with that one. Now, if we are to consider the fact that uh, we had already proven that this is a cyclic quad here. So note that from the previous question, we have already proven that this is a cyclic quad here. Right? And then uh, what we can actually do to in order to prove that uh, is to say that, uh, remember, we had our K, K3 here is equals to a because of corresponding angles so uh, we still use that note with uh, euclid and geometry questions it is always follow-up questions whatever that you're going to use to prove a uh, 11.1 then you're definitely going to use for 11.2 then whatever that you're going to use for 11.2 you're definitely going to need for 11.3 so it's always in that order so we we did uh, deduce that k is equals to angle A and then let's just say proven above so there is no need to write the reason again because it's there then we say proven above but then uh, if we have to look at it based on K2 look at K2 remember we have already concluded that this is a cyclic quad here so if we say K2 uh, if this is a cyclic quad that means K2 is equals to T3 angles on the same segment so angles on the same segment right now look at this t3 uh, we have t3 here being equals to k2 but then our our t3 here is equals to what our t3 is equals to angle a Look at this, because of what? Tan chord. So if you can see the tangent TP, and then we have angle A here, you can see that this is tan chord angle between the tangent and the chord is equal to the angle on the alternate segment. So T3 is equal to angle A. And now I want you to notice something beautiful. This is K3 is equal to A. K2 is equal to T3. But then T3 happens to be equals to A. That means K2 is also equals to A. 
So if K2 is equal to A and K3 is equal to A, what can we conclude about K2 and K3 is the fact that they are equal. So K2 can say, therefore, K2 is equal to K3. So remember, the reason for this one was turn cord. Again, that's six marks. Check. Statement, reason. Statement, reason. Statement, reason. And then we have our conclusion, of course, no mark for that. So now, uh, by proving that K2 is equal to K3, we have concluded that PK bisects TKQ because that's the whole point. If we want to prove that a line bisects, then we should uh, prove that the angles that are being bisected there are equal. Let us proceed. Okay, for 11.3, remember I said that whatever that you used in 11.2 will come in handy for 11.3. Remember, uh, for the previous question, 11.2, we had proven that K2 is equals to angle A. Right. So we'll just say proven above. So let's note that this angle here is equals to this angle here. But then if you are to consider the fact that we have parallel lines, these are the parallel lines. And then they making a Z shape there. Now we know if we have a Z shape like that, that's alternate angles. So we can prove that K2 is equal to Q3. So let's go Q2, K2 is equal to Q3. Why? Alternate angles. Reason for that, uh, I mean, alternate angles and then uh, the pair of parallel lines, it's PK parallel to QA. As we can see here, these are alternate angles. They form a Z like that or Z. Okay, now, since K2 is equal to A and K2 is equal to Q3, what is it that we can conclude about these two angles? It's that they're equal. So we can now say, therefore, angle A is equal to angle Q3. Statement, reason, statement, reason. Then we have our conclusion. Voila. So let's proceed to 11.4. So... For 11.4, it says if T2 is equal to P1, then prove that AQT is 90 degrees, right? Now, from 11.1, remember that we, we have proven that PTKQ is a cyclic quad. So very crucial. Remember, whatever that you have proven above will come in handy when you answer the questions below then uh, we know that there is a cyclic quad and we are given let's uh, write the given statement we are given that uh, t2 is equals to p1 so let's just write given on that and then let's indicate so that's my t2 is equals to p1 but if we are to consider that this is a cyclic quad then we know that an angle uh, subtended by the same chord on uh, the same segment are equal, right? So KT subtends angle P1, KT subtend angle Q2. So these are angles on the same segment that are subtended by the same chord. So we can say P1 is equal to Q2. And what's the reason for that? Angles on the same segment. But note this, if we say T2 is equal to P1 and uh, Q2 is also equal to P1, both of these angles T2 and Q2 are equal to P1. So what can we conclude about these two angles? We can conclude that they are equal. Therefore, TQ, T2 is equal to Q2. Right. So this is the observation here. Now, note what is the approach that I'm trying to take here? 
I know that uh, the angle 90 degree can be subtended according to my uh, circle geometry theorems. The angle of 90 degrees is always subtended by a diameter. So a diameter subtends an angle of 90 degrees. So the approach that I'm trying to take here is to actually prove that AKT here is a diameter. Now, if you have to depend on your diagram, that doesn't look like a diameter, but we know they always tell us uh, the diagrams are not drawn to scale. So it is possible that we might find that AKT is a diameter. They do not have to draw it like a diameter. So, okay, now if we have to look at this part here, so come along with me. Let's look at this triangle here. And then in respect to angle K1, in respect to angle K1, now you can see a situation like this, which is an exterior angle is equal to two opposite interior angles of a triangle. Now, looking at K1, we can see that K1 here is an exterior angle of this triangle here. That means it should be equal to T2 plus Q2. So let's write that one. K1 is equals to T2 plus Q2. And then what's the reason for that? Exterior angle of triangle. But then remember, T2 is equals to Q2. That means we can replace Q2 here by T2. In that way, we find that K1 is twice the size of T2. So this will be T2 plus T2. That gives us two times T2, right? So, but then if we have proven that K1 is equal to T2, we are looking at the fact that this is a converse theorem of angle at center is equal to two times angle at circumference. That means in that way, I have proven that angle K here is the center. If angle K here is the center, that means chord AKT is a diameter. Remember, what is a diameter? It is a special chord that passes through the center. So in other words, I have concluded that AKT, therefore AKT is a diameter. Now, if AKT is a diameter, we know that a diameter subtends an angle of 90 degrees. Look at this magic. So AKT is a diameter. Therefore, it subtends an angle here of 90 degrees. Right. So hold point A and point T, and then where they meet here, they will form an angle of 90 degrees. But then this angle here, note, it is the angle AQT. So therefore, AQT is 90 degrees. Why? Angle on a semicircle. Or you can say angle subtended by a diameter. So that's how you were supposed to tackle that question. So please press the thumbs up button if you have enjoyed the lesson and then you have found it helpful. Then join us again for episode number four of today's challenge. And then if you've been watching the videos and haven't subscribed, please, please hit that subscribe button. But most importantly, share the link with your friends and classmates so that they may also find assistance. Remember, do not be selfish. We are winning as a team. Oh.